Welcome everyone to the Adaptive Cards Community Call June edition. Today we'll be talking about the Teams Toolkit version 4.0 that was recently announced in Build. Uh, I'll go over an, a live app demo and then we can move over to our Q&A section. We were supposed to have someone from the Teams Toolkit uh, team to actually come and share this demo, but last minute they were unable to make it. So I'll go ahead and take over the demo and talk about the Teams Toolkit version 4.0. So what exactly is the Teams Toolkit? The Teams Toolkit is a Visual Studio Code extension that allows you to create Teams apps with very minimal work. It'll provide the boilerplate code to get you started, up and running. And in version 4.0 of the Teams Toolkit, which was the most recent release announced in Build, they allow for scenario-based app creations. So it'll allow you to create things like bot notification apps and command bot apps for Teams by just oh. making a couple clicks in Visual Studio. This infographic really shows it well. Another new thing that was introduced in Teams Toolkit version 4.0 is the ability to run your apps on Outlook and Office as well. So they allow you to not only run it on, run it on Teams, but run it on Outlook and Office as well. Um, the prerequisites for the Teams Toolkit is the Teams Toolkit extension for Visual Studio Code. You need Microsoft Teams. You need Node.js a browser with developer tools. For this demo, I'll be using Microsoft Edge. And then, of course, Visual Studio Code to run the extension. There is one more prerequisite, which is having something called a, a developer tenant um, on your M365 account. I went ahead and set that up. It was a couple of clicks. It'll be included in documentation that I send out as well. This basically allows you to have side loading for the apps that you're creating enabled on your Teams client. And without further ado, let me get started with the demo here. So I'll share my screen here. Okay, so when you first start off, you won't get any of this. So you'll actually, right after installing the Teams Toolkit extension, you'll get this tab right here that says Teams Toolkit. When you go ahead and click on it, it'll show you that you've been signed into your account. If you haven't signed in, you can go ahead and sign in there. And then it'll also show you that you can create a new Teams app. You go here, create a new Teams app. They also allow you to start from samples, which is very cool. But if you create your new Teams app, and for this demo, I went ahead and created a notification bot. So you'll see the notification bot right here as one of the options. That's the one I went ahead and selected, and it'll allow different triggers as well. So using things like Azure functions, it'll allow you to have an HTTP trigger or a timer trigger. I went ahead and selected the timer trigger here. Um, you click OK, and that's what will take you to here. I can just exit all this out. So you'll be greeted with this README file that'll show you everything that's that you can do with the Teams Toolkit app that you just created. So in this one, you can see the adaptive card that will be sent out, and it'll be an adaptive card that's automatically sent out with a timer trigger of every 30 seconds. One use case that you might be able to see for this is a reminder that every 30 minutes you drink water or something similar to that. Um, it'll give you everything you need to get started and then even tell you what the specific files do for, for this timer trigger app that you created. Another cool thing is that if you have the Adaptive Card Studio Visual Studio Code extension as well, you'll get this little icon right here that you can click and it'll allow you to see your adaptive card as you make edits to it in Visual Studio Code. Um, else, you can also help hop into the adaptive cards designer on the website to get this information as well. And yeah, this is the, the JSON. This is how the adaptive cards will look like, the one that's going to be sent out by the app. And right here, you have your timer trigger. When you go ahead and create the app, it'll ask you if you want yeah, it in TypeScript or in JavaScript. I went ahead and selected JavaScript for this one. And um, it'll. Th this is all code that was generated for me. So I didn't write a single line of code in this. It was all generated through the Teams Toolkit. So it's really easy to go ahead and get started making Teams, app, Teams apps um, that utilize adaptive cards as well. It'll also show you, like, for example, if you want to have different notifications or the bot sent send notifications in a different channel. You can uncomment these lines of code right here. 
Um, if you want it sent in the group, you can uncomment this. And if you want it sent to a specific person, you can uncomment this part and then just copy whatever you have here. In this one, we can see that it's going to utilize this template and it's going to fill in the values that we have here. So for example, title, um, it's going to be a new event occurred, app name, Contoso app notification, and that's everything that this part does. And then when you actually want to go ahead and start seeing your app work, you can go right here to the run and debug, um, selecting edge for my debug option, and then I'll start debugging. Then I'll go ahead and share the window once it's ready. So almost done here. Okay, cool. Um, let me share this window. And here we see that it's opened up our Teams client where the app is trying to get installed. So I named this app Teams Toolkit Demo. I can go ahead and add it, or I can also add it to a team, add it to a chat. Um, we'll go ahead and just click Add, and it'll add right here to the left side. I might get an error for this because I already went ahead and added it prior to this demo. Okay, cool. So it didn't make an error. And then you can see the notification is being posted. So a new event occurred, Contoso app, what we saw was getting passed into the adaptive card JSON as data. And then every 30 seconds, we should be able to get a new notification. And you can edit things like the timer trigger to be minutes, seconds, whatever you want it to be um, sent for different teams, people, um, even channels that you have with groups of people. So we'll give it a couple more seconds so that we get the other notification. Let me just check that everything's running smoothly. These were the previous ones that were sent out right before um, the demo started. Okay, and here we see the part of the demo that does not work, <laughs> but you can see the adaptive card that I showed previously. Um, I'm not sure what's going on with it, but yeah, but you'll, you'll be able to see it with the timer trigger of 30 seconds whenever it decides to work here. It might just be going slow. And yeah, let me hop back into the presentation here. And um, I'll share all these links down here in the chat as well. Uh, you can go ahead and get started with the Hello World by going to this aka.ms Teams app JS. This is a case sensitive link. So make sure that the JS at the end is capitalized and so is the app and the Teams. To get an overview, just a general overview of the Teams toolkit extension, you can head over to the second link and the following links just provide more information on the Teams toolkit as well. Also, huge shout out to Tomomi, who's the person that wrote the, the blog post where I, I learned about the Teams toolkit version 4.0. She's also the person that created this very cool infographic that you see here. I don't see too many of these, so it's actually pretty cool to see the functionality displayed in, in a way like this. So huge shout outs to, to Moby for that. And yeah, I think the, the biggest part for, for this demo on the Teams Toolkit version 4.0 that was announced in build is the ability to create scenario-based apps with just a couple of clips. You're not required to be a developer or even know exactly what the code does, as, as long as you can just get the general idea from the code that's provided to you, that's generated through the Teams toolkit, you'll be able to create your Teams apps and now even utilize them in Outlook and other Office applications. And we can hop over to the Q&A section with them. Thomas, you have your hand up. Hey there, how's it going? All good, how about uh, yourself? Great, thanks for sharing this. I got on, I, I got on just a little bit late, so um, this what I saw was really awesome. Um, so what I'm wondering is just a you know quick question. 
if I have a list, let's say of, uh, let's say I'm taking a survey and there's errors in that survey and I have that survey going to SharePoint, for example, would I be able to create a, a notice to that survey taker, respondent or whatever that said, hey, you screwed up, here's a link to that ticket, go fix it? I'm not sure you would be able to specifically point out someone with the code that I showed, you are able to send the adaptive card to a specific person. But as far as logic goes, it might be possible. Uh, this would actually be an excellent question for someone on the team's toolkit team. Unfortunately, they weren't able to make it to this meeting, but I, I know that you are able to send it to a specific person as far as logic goes to, for example, detect that an error was made on a survey and then well, I mean, that part of it, I could person. figure it out, but I'm just saying if once I figured it out that there was an error and I wanted to notify that person, I would be able to use this process to send them a message, right? Say, hey, uh, or maybe include the error in the message and say, what should it be? You know, something to that effect. Yeah, um, I don't see why not. If you're able to determine which person it is and tell the app, send it to to this person then you you would be able to because I know for a fact that you are able to send it to a specific person or even a group of people. All right, great. Thank you very much. No worries. Were you able to get that? I sort of. Yeah, you kind of chopped out a little bit, but um, I kind of, you know, I, I, I get the drift of what you what I caught. Let's put it that way. <laughs> but thank you. All right. For I was just saying that I know something. that you can send it to a specific person. So if you are able to figure out the logic part to determine who was the person that incorrectly filled out the survey, I don't see why you wouldn't be able to send that person a specific reminder. All right. Excellent. Thank you. No problem, Thomas. Thank you for asking the question. Um, let me scroll up in the chat and see if someone has any questions here. Sandra asks, can we update this card in place? Yes, that is available. So with the Visual Studio Code extension for Adaptive Card Studio, the one that allows you to preview the app, uh, well, you can actually make the edits without needing that extension, but that just makes it easier because it allows you to see the changes sort of as if you were working with our designer while you're making the changes. So you, you are able to edit the, the Adaptive Card and see the changes made to the adaptive card within Visual Studio Code. Riley, you have your hand up. Yes, hello. Uh, I, I had a question. I don't know if this goes more to the Power Automate side of things, like using adaptive cards within there specifically, uh, mm -hmm. but it's around the, uh, when you have the trigger, you're just trying to process the same kind of card, maybe posted in different channels or on different whether it's teams or like a, an actionable message type thing within outlook i know that there's that card type id tag mm -hmm. um, and it's i'm just trying to understand uh, where that card type id kind of comes from if it's an artifact of power automate like if it was just made for power automate or if it's an attribute of the card itself because i'm wondering if i can utilize that more because i really like that the kind of general trigger rather than the uh, wait for a response kind of trigger that you have to uh, sort of do one user at a time. And I like the flexibility it offers, but it, uh, there are some uh, limitations to it. And I'm just wondering if that can be uh, opened up or what the kind of uh, status behind that is. Yeah, absolutely. So if you haven't watched last month's community call, we had the person that uh, on the Power Automate team that actually made that trigger hop on and sh give us a demo of how that trigger worked. But in short, the um, card type ID that you're mentioning, that card type ID is made by by yourself. So it could be anything. It could be an ID that you create. As long as you assign it to the adaptive card that you're going to be sending, it'll detect the card type ID that way. I know it's a bit confusing, and they did mention that they were going to include things like blog posts and more documentation to make it more user friendly. But the feature is in preview and still is getting worked on. So I think that's the reason why you you are not able to find that information right now. But I can go ahead and link the YouTube video with the recording for last month's community call where um, demos were shared out about this. OK, I, I guess my question was also around um, if there's other ways to set it. Like uh, I know that if you set, uh, you do that uh, action of posting an adaptive card in a chat or channel, um, then you can set the card type ID that way. But I was curious if there's any other methods or if currently that's kind of like engineered to be the only possible way to set card type ID. 
I think as of right now, that's the only way. I also got a question on Twitter about this. I'm not aware of any other way that you are able to set this card type ID outside of just the front end in Power Automate when you're creating the trigger and in the flow. But if if there are any other ways, then I can go ahead and share those out once those become available. I, I do know that the feature right now is very limited and there's a lot of people that are very excited for it. So hopefully this motivates the Power Automate team to make more updates on it and include more documentation for it. Okay, thank you. No problem. Thank you for asking the question. Whoever has their hand up, if you just want to unmute and. Yeah, it's probably me. Hello, this okay. is Chris. <laughs> How's it going, I Chris? A, I have a question, or I'm not sure if this is the proper form to report a problem on the new adaptive card through Power Automate and Logic apps that was shown off last week or last month. Okay. Um, specifically, the one that says update an adaptive card in a chat or channel. We've tried okay. using this in our Azure Logic Apps environment, and every time we run it for the first time, like let's say today is the first time we run it, we get an error that says the ID of the user you're uh, attempting to edit the message does not match the actual user ID of the original sender. Um, okay. But we are using Power Automate to post the card and also update the card. So we're using the option that says use Flowbot, I think is what it says. Um, the strange thing is that if you run the flow a second or third time without making any changes at all, it will magically start working and not error out. Um, so I'm, I'm guessing it's some kind of bug and I'm not sure if others have experienced that or perhaps I'm reporting it for the first time. Yeah, I'm not sure, but what you can do, Chris, is if you head over to the adaptive cards repo, you can open up an issue with the details that you just mentioned, sort of like how to reproduce the, the error or the error that you're experiencing. And even if it is a Power Automate bug, we do weekly triages for the repository. And if it's a bug that comes for another team, we can route it over to them to investigate. Got it. Okay, I'll post on there. Thank you, Chris, for letting us know about that. Um, who else has asked a question? Does anyone have examples slash tutorials of connecting SPFX through data gateway to on-prem data, please? Uh, Richard, unfortunately, I don't know how to be able to do that. Um, we had someone in a previous community called Microsoft MVP, Fabio, who works a lot with the SPFX framework and actually created a um, sort of adaptive cards designer for the SPFX framework as well. Um, maybe that community call helps, I doubt it, but unfortunately, yeah, I don't have the answer to how to go about doing that. Sorry. Um, we have a question from Gareth. Do you have any estimate on when these features will leave preview? No, uh, I know that they came out very recently, Gareth. They came out last month, sort of at the time when we had the community call. I know that we had the community call, and I think the day after was when the update a card in place um, came out. Um, they're still in preview. I'm not sure when they would leave preview. I did see one about universal actions. Um, is there any specific updates that you're looking for uh, as far as universal actions or or just general information about that? Yeah, this is, this is my question. I think just, just general information. We're just trying to figure out how to, um, it, with, with clients that we work with, how to put more sort of um, actionable information into their inboxes because it just it's, it's difficult, obviously, to do, to interact with their team's environment often, um, but we can, you know, assuming that we get the adaptive a card approved, uh, go through that process um, to put more actual cards in their in their mailbox. I think is uh, can be really helpful. So I don't know if there's sort of some some further vision you want to give on that or where we're at um, just in in progressing some of that and how that works. I think we just run into some bumps as the you know the action messenger thing sort of gets deprecated and replaced by that. So I'm just wondering if there's resources, yeah. insights, et cetera. Yeah. Um, so if there are any specific bugs that you are experiencing with universal actions in Outlook, for example, feel free to open it in the adaptive cards repo um, in the issues tab. 
I can try to get a link for that. My device is being very slow right now. But I know that specifically for the Outlook team, universal actions is a huge area that they're focusing on. They've seen a lot of improvements and user satisfaction from people that use universal actions and have metrics to to show them. Um, I think it was two months ago where we had a whole community call about universal actions and message extensions and how they can elevate your adaptive card experience. Yeah. If you haven't seen that one, I would highly recommend seeing that. They go over a little about their metrics and how much time is saved and other improvements that happen because of universal actions. I do know it's it's constantly being looked at and improved. And if there are any bugs that you're experiencing specifically, you can let us know and we can route it over to their team. Yeah, that was sort of the, the inspiration of our of our work was that that particular session. And uh, I guess I was just just curious to hear more more about it. I think sometimes it gets a little confusing. So if it's an adaptive card, you know, it's sort of adaptive card, but it's Outlook. But you know, like we're the yeah the group that's going to have the most insight into what is and isn't working. Sometimes gets even at just asking the question in this forum. I wasn't sure. Well, is this the right place or is it? You know, like is it should it be? No, so, I, I think it's, it's an appropriate place. Yeah, you're you're absolutely right. This this is an appropriate place for. So I should go back to that, to the more on the Outlook oriented team with some of that feedback or questions or how those things are getting updated in people's inboxes, et cetera. Um, can you, I'm also on the adaptive card team. It sounds like you're having an issue with the universal actions stuff with Outlook. Yeah, yeah. I think it's just in terms of how those, how those cards get updated. You have the same card ascent in multiple inboxes, and the things get updated, and how that refresh works there. And and okay, then, are you currently using the solution in a production environment? No, and, it's in a in a uh, whatever, like a, a early test environment, but with you know with cust with, with friendly customers that are willing to kind of go along for the ride. Yeah. Okay. Um, feel free to shoot us. Do you have um? Tell me more about your use case. Like, I'm not as familiar with universal actions, but um, it might be good. One really easy way to get a hold of us is to like file an issue on on GitHub, and then we can like message back and forth about the issue. That would be like one one way to get directly like contact with the folks who work on adaptive cards on the, on the engineering side. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know because you know I just chances are in 99 times out of 100 I'm just you know doing something stupid, so I I don't want to clog. I just am always hesitant to clog up your get issues with you know some user error thing on my part. But if that's the easiest way, I can certainly do that. Yeah. No. No worries about that. And and thanks, Adam. My my team's crashed, and I just reached oh, no. on my phone here. <laughs> But don't worry about that, Dan. The the GitHub repo is exactly for that. And if there's anything that you're doing wrong, we can sort of triage it and find out and help you out to get your solution up and going. And I'm yeah. glad to hear that that month's community call was sort of the inspiration oh, for you to get started on this. It was enlightening, I would call it. Yeah, it was really, really <laughs> cool. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. I know the Outlook team specifically requested like any feedback that people had on that call and we weren't able to provide much um, to them about that, but I'll be sure to pass on this message to them. Yeah, yeah, and, and I think there's a bit of inner conflict for me because I hate the fact that we still drive so much stuff through email. It makes me nuts. Like I just think it's such a silly idea, um, but I can't change that. You know, I know you guys are down that track too, but the reality is so much happens still for so many people in their inbox, which again, I think is silly, but so the more we can kind of more places we can put those cards to where people feel like, oh, it's not an email to go here, to go there, to go there. It's like right then and there, I can say like our use cases, think of like a case management system with some approval. So something changes, needs a supervisor approval. Um, we can we can send that right into their inbox. They can make decisions about it. It's updated in the inbox of the requester. So it's, it's kind of extending the context of um, our, our, our app uh, on the other side into the inbox, which is um, really helpful for our, our users as much as we'd like to say, go back to the app or go back to Teams, they're still sitting in their inbox for most of the day. So that's that's kind of a brief 
And we want that sort of updated card to be sent multiple places, updated, so if there's process, et cetera. So it's brilliant. We love it and, and hate it all at the same time. <laughs> we hate that we love it or something like that. Yeah, I'm not sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's awesome, Dan. Thank you so much for sharing your feedback there. And we're here to help in case you, you run into any issues in the future. Uh, moving on, we have a question from Brad. Can you comment on the status of the upcoming 1.6 release? Brad, unfortunately, we haven't been able to get the 1.6 release out the door quite yet for adaptive cards. Our team has been focusing a lot on accessibility improvements, so we've made a ton of accessibility fixes for things like our website and some renders that had some notable accessibility bugs. We're, we're still trying to work on accessibility and improving the overall accessibility experience for adaptive cards. Hopefully, we're able to get some version, even if it's just the preview version of 1.6 out by this quarter. But as of right now, I can't make any commitments on when version 1.6 of our schema will be coming out. Where slash what is the best place to post requests for new Teams Adaptive Cards actions? Uh, Chris, are you referring to the triggers that you see on things like Power Automate, for example? Yeah, Power Automate and Azure Logic Apps. Let me see if I can get you the link to, to their feedback hub here um, before we end the call. And if um, we haven't ended the call, or if we have ended the call and I'm not able to get that link, I can just message it to you um, and send it in this chat as well. I know a lot of people lose access to the chat when the meeting ends, so uh, I'll do my best to get the answer for that. And since we lose uh, access to this, or may lose access, where would we find the video? So. Um, after this call ends, we edit the community call and then we update it. We upload it to our YouTube channel. Um, I can go ahead and send it to to the chat. Thank you. Thank you. Gareth, I see your hand up. Do you have a question? Um, are you able to provide any updates on uh, the incorporation of the fluid components that was mentioned due in build? Like, how would how would that work? Would that be waiting on? integration with fluid components you mentioned yeah yeah i'm i'm not familiar with that announcement on build can you provide a little more context and maybe i can help uh, i'll i'll google it and ping a link oh okay awesome sorry about that I, I wasn't aware that fluid components made an announcement on adaptive cards and i see mike is asking in the chat about some documentation that tamaz is sending out um mike Tomas's YouTube channel is amazing. When we shared the update adaptive card in last month's community call, I think he had a video out already on it or very short, shortly after, like a day or two um, later. Um, I use his channel a lot to learn about these triggers on Power Automate and things about adaptive cards. And I, I think it's a great resource to, to learn more about adaptive cards and all the different functionalities um, for it. Hi, um, I have a question. I wasn't actually sure how to how to type it out, uh, if, if if I may. Yeah, um, go ahead, Eric. Um, so very very new to this, but wanted to understand: is it possible, or have you heard of um, uh, anyone, uh, any any organization taking regular email messages and whether through transport rules or flow or, or something, inserting adaptive card code into incoming messages so that even though it wasn't generated from a system that is of a particular type, maybe a particular source, what have you, uh, that people insert an adaptive card to be able to do something, to be able to take some action and utilize the context in the message. And you're, that, you're asking if that's possible today, right? Yes. I think something related to the question that you're asking is also related to the question that was asked in chat about loop components. So loop components are a way that you can sync your different adaptive cards in different apps. I believe that this is something that's also enabled with the Teams Toolkit version 4 that I shared out. So one of the new capabilities that were just released with the Teams Toolkit is the ability to have your adaptive card be shown in not just Teams, but in other Outlook apps and Microsoft 365 apps as well. I'm not sure if that specifically relates to your question. Um, let's say um, uh, what well, we're we're an insurance uh, insurance company, well, broker. Okay. Lots of very common messages coming in that flow into a workflow. The other gentleman said 
so much work comes in through through email. So we have workflows. Um, lots of teams have workflows built around uh, exactly that. So there's very predictable logic. And I'm thinking if we're able to take a message that we didn't generate, but there's there's predictable content in there and an actual card utilized that. But we're not generating the message, right? It's a regular message someone type or system generated from another company. But for even insert logic where the the recipient internally is able to take action on it in context, uh, that would be incredible for messages we did not generate, but we modify uh, inbound. I see. So you're receiving a message and you're wondering if you can sort of react to that message in a way with a specific adaptive card. Right, because it would be much better, lighter weight and more flexibility than, than developing an, an Outlook add-in to do the same. Yeah, I'm not sure if that's, that's possible today. I think the other way around, sort of like you sending like a context aware adaptive card or something or like an, an adaptive card that has information that applies to to the users of that insurance that is possible the other way around sort of like them sending you a message and an adaptive card handling that in a specific way or reacting to it in a way i'm not sure if that's possible today um yeah if i had to make a bet i, I don't think that's possible today but that's excellent feedback as well for for the outlook team that's constantly looking to improve this experience and and evolve it as as we go Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, yeah, that, that, I think that would be huge for us if we could insert that logic on email messages. I mean, we could, uh, that would just take workflow and automation, business process automation in an incredible direction for things we don't generate. Yeah, absolutely. And I'll be sure to share out that feedback with them. That, as I said, that it's, it's an area that they're constantly looking to improve and build on, and they're always looking for feedback like this. So I'll point them to a recording and I'll also send them out the specific feedback that was shared out on this call to hopefully get some traction on that. Good deal. And thank you for the information. Thank you for the session. It's, it's incredible. No, no problem, Eric. Thank you for joining and asking the question. I think I'm caught up with all the questions in chat. Does anyone else have some questions they would like to ask? I'll take the silence as a no. <laughs> Thanks everyone for, for joining the June adaptive cards community call as i mentioned this call will be uploaded to youtube as soon as it's edited i did forget about sending the links that i mentioned um, in the chat so let me go ahead and do that now before i end the call and these will also all, all the links mentioned and all the links shared in the chat just in case you want to access them later will also be available in the blog post that gets written for this community call perfect thank you thank everyone thank you Thank you.